Very warm welcome to you all to this edition of Ix Live. My name's David Cunningham. I'm at Ix Blue HQ here in Saint-Germain, just west of Paris. <clears throat> I'll be joined shortly by a colleague from uh, our Sonar Systems Division down in the south of France in La Ciota. Um, in case none of you have seen the uh, an Ix Live previously, uh, the, the format will be around about a 15-minute presentation uh, followed by questions and answers. So please don't hesitate to, to post your questions through the course of the, the, uh, the presentation, and we will answer them all. Um, so um, this is a big subject. Um, we don't propose to delve very deep into the, into the topic in the 15 minutes we've got, in the half an hour sort of presentation that we've got. So um, if you want to follow up with further in-depth questions, then please, please, please um, do so afterwards. Um, we'll post um, a recording of this on our website and it will be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, so you'll be able to see it later or, or share it with colleagues. Um, that's it. Right. Let's get into the uh, let's get into the story and introduce Guillaume Juve, um, who's uh, Hello, David. With, our, in our, with our team down in, in La Ciota. Um, and so, Guillaume, maybe you can start by just giving us a, a quick overview, a quick introduction on the, the history, the technology, and maybe uh, the product range as well of the Echo series. Oh, yes, of course. So Echo series provides the best high resolution to motor profilers. So this comes from 30 years of field proven technology and expertise in designing transducers. So basically, Echo is our chirp system. So each system is an emitter and a receiver. The Echo series ensures the best signal quality thanks to a unique flat spectrum for characterizing, let's say, the structure of the first 200 meters of sediments. So Echo's ranges from the 3,500, the 5,000, and the 10,000. So depending on the water depths you need to work and also the resolution you want to obtain. So we have a full range from low deep water systems that can be held mounted to higher frequency portable plus AUV, ARV, multiple solutions. Okay, that's good. That's a 10 second introduction to the Echo series. Um, but so um, in, in a nutshell, um, the range includes systems for deep water, permanent installations on, on, uh, on research vessels, the 3500 which is available in a range of different sizes, um, all the way to yeah, the 10,000, right. which is the really small portable higher frequency system for, for let's say, temporary mobile installations. Um, yeah, right. Uh, and all adopting the same uh, transducer technology, um, which you, you mentioned the flat spectrum of, of, the, of the, uh, the signal. Maybe you can just dig a little bit into that and explain what, what that means, Guillaume. Yes, yeah, so the flat spectrum is a key characteristic of the ECHO series and leads to better quality data. So with our transducer technology and advanced processing, signal processing, we have a perfect control of the bandwidths of our transducers. So as can be seen uh, on the left side of the screen, we are perfectly power efficient in the announced bandwidths of the ECHO 10,000. So this means that we have the best signal quality on the seismic data, meaning also that we have the best signal-to-noise ratio and we don't observe any false sediment layers. It's like we design hi-fi for geophysics, producing the very best data. Okay, so the, 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 the flat spectrum, um, the control of that, uh, that, that um, signal is at the heart of the, the data quality um, yeah. across the full range. Um, bringing various benefits to the uh, to the user to the operator but basically it's about better data um, yeah. so so let's say better better records um, but beyond that is there is there any other feature what about object detection Guillaume is that is that feasible with these chirp systems oh yes uh, yes we can so because of the wide uh, aperture of uh, the echoes, it's certainly possible. The beam aperture uh, is about 15, 20 degrees and allows to obtain multiple returns from a single object during the survey. So this generate parabolas, the top of which is at the location of the object. So here you can see on the screen, you can follow the uh, position, exact position of the pipeline. So 
The object detection capability is a distinct advantage over narrow beam aperture systems such as parametric, for example. Okay, so you, with the CHIRP system, you've got this wider beam aperture giving you the opportunity to uh, detect objects. You have multiple signals across a, along a line. Um, to, to, so you can track pipes or you can find pipes and, uh, and, and, and cables and, and so on. Um, yeah, right. So just, so just coming back then to the, uh, the data quality topic, we were, we, were, we were discussing earlier about this flat spectrum delivering, you know, uh, the best quality data. Um, so in terms of the value of that, what, what, why is that, what real value does that have for the, uh, for the user? It's not just pretty pictures. Yes, yes, right. So I try to make this simple. So better data allows rapid, close to real-time post-processing. So quality data means also horizontal continuity through the survey. So it allows automatic detection of the sediment layers. So for example, using Delft here, you can see on the top of the screen, um, the seismic reflection profile. So you double click on the layer, and you follow all uh, the layer automatically, and you can generate with all your seismic profile, isopax or so digital terrain model of all the layers you detected, and you can extract very rapidly with Delft, uh, for example, volume of sediments or the thickness of some deposits, and this can be done very rapidly. So fast processing with minimal cleaning means that analysis of the data can start sooner and obviously reporting is completed sooner or so. Okay, so the actual, the real value in, 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 the, in the higher quality data is the opportunity to use um, automated processing techniques or you have very much faster data cleaning or processing um, which gets you to the end uh, report much quicker. Which, yes, right. you know, I, I can see that being of interest, let's say, as more and more data is generated with unmanned uh, systems, for example, um, yeah. generating big data sets with no people nearby to, uh, to clean them. You don't want to generate a workload uh, later. So this real-time um, quality of data is, uh, is, is really valuable in that context. Um, right. Okay, that's good. Um, so now let's just get a little bit more operational, Guillaume. Maybe you can give us an overview of, um, of, of the installation options across the range. And it, it's, I know that it's a big topic, so we can't, we can't dig too deeply into it. <laughs> yes. So obviously, installation options depends on the model you have. So as mentioned previously, we have hell-mounted options for permanent uh, installation. And we have AUV deployable system and, of course, USV deployment on Drix, for example, is also possible. But uh, let's have a look at the Diecos 10,000. So, for example, which is the small, highly portable and well-suited to temporary mounted option, uh, for example. And on the screen, uh, we can see a small boat with the Diecos 10,000 antenna, put it on the, um, on the pole. And uh, then on board, you need a laptop, the top side unit, and the GNSS. And you can observe in real time the acquisition with the Delft Seismic software. Okay, yeah, so the simplicity of the pole mount option with a system such as the Echoes 10,000 is obviously a portable system. And the options obviously going all the way up to uh, the large Echoes 3500 7 transducer system permanently mounted on a you know, a significant size research vessel, uh, as well yes, as it's AUV. Very, very rapid. So yeah. in about one hour, you can start uh, your geophysical survey. With the Echoes 10,000. Yeah, good. With the Echoes 10,000, yes. And, and then you, you mentioned the AUV um, uh, installation uh, with the Echoes 5,000. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, that's good. So now... Uh, uh, Staying on the theme of the Echoes 10,000, we've seen the, 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 the simple installation, the pole mount on a, on a vessel opportunity. Have you got some data to show us of the Echoes 10,000, which uh, has got some interesting features, I think? Yes, yes, we have a, an example that we can show on the seismic, seismic profile. For example, this comes from a survey we did in Scotland and uh, within an archaeological project. And we can see on these profiles several interesting features. So we have gaseous fluids, 
We have the fine clay-rich sedimentation, and we also have on top of it uh, small parabolas. And these correspond to isolated high-reflectivity objects, and actually we record these sediments. And we found a lot of cobbles and uh, pebbles, and each of them um, uh, correspond to one parabola that is uh, observable in the seismic profile. Okay, that's great. So these are the these. This is the core um, with the, the pebble, round about ten centimeter diameter, I think. Guillaume, is that yes, right? right? It's about ten centimeters. Yes, right. Yeah, and I I, I don't know if uh, for, for our viewers if that uh, is very easy to see in the uh, in the in the presentation. Um, but if not, then please contact afterwards, and, and we can show you a bit more in a bit more resolu better resolution, perhaps. Um, that's kind of sort of the end of our, our presentation, Guillaume, I think, isn't it? Um, we're, we're ready for some questions. Um, I think in summary, the, the, you know, we've got this full range of, of sub-bottom profilers, which are all field proven and in operation, unique chirp um, quality um, data, um, delivering really, really fast results with the Delft sub um, Delft processing solution software um yes so questions guillaume are you ready for questions yes i'm ready right, here we go we've got some here <laughs> we've got one yeah. our very first question is yeah what's what what's the difference between reflection seismic and sub bottom profilers and where do echoes where does the echo series fit into that Okay, so um, uh, the reflection seismic is a generic term. So subbottom profilers represent the high frequency part of the reflection seismic. So echoes overlap from 1.7 kilohertz to 15 kilohertz. And echoes can be used together with reflection seismic for better resolution in the first tens of meters. And what I can say, finally, that subbottom profilers reduce human risk. Contrary to a reflection seismic, lower frequency system. Okay, hope that's clear. <laughs> um, another question: What are the benefits in in develop in de developing a pole mounted sub bottom profiler like the Echoes Ten Thousand? Um, we have a lot of advantages, like positioning, for example. So if you have motion and weather, you have bad weather, so you have a continuity uh, in the signal. And also you have a, a Z reference that is uh, constrained using the pole mounted version. Also, no winch is required and can be used for side scan sonar or mag instead, for example. What is also uh, an advantage is working in shallow water and in marine traffic uh, areas, for example, also. And we can work very close to structures like arbors or wind farm. Okay, so the, the, there's, there's a number of operational advantages of not towing things, and yeah. uh, you've got better positioning. For example, with the, if, I, if I can add just something with uh, the 10,000, we can work until one meter of, uh, one meter of water depth. Okay. okay, yeah, so you can get into much shallower it's water. Super shallow environments. Close to structures, and you've got an advantage with, the, yeah. the, let's say, the heave compensation and the, and the positioning of the, of the, of the data. Um, yeah, right. Because you don't have the uncertainty of the the, the, the towfish positioning. Okay, that's good. Um, we've got right. we've got one here about the Echoes thirty five hundred. Um, yes. And so what? Yeah, you know, Echoes models come with a, with numbers thirty five hundred, ten thousand, and letters T one. T3. Yes, exactly. What What's the? Uh, can you decode that for us, please? <laughs> Yes. So, for example, the 3500 T1 is one transducers. So you have a beam uh, aperture that is uh, wider, and the T3. So you have a narrower um, uh, beam aperture and the seven transducers. So this means that you have different transducers, and means that you have different uh, penetration that is associated with that. Okay. Um. Okay, so the 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 the, the thirty five hundred, the ten thousand, the five thousand is is the nominal is the center frequency of the of the. Oh, so thirty five hundred is the the central frequency 
of uh, the bandwidth and it's also the bandwidth. Yeah. So for example, let's say uh, an example with the 10,000, for example, so the 10,000 is the central frequency and it's also the bandwidth. So it ranges from five kilohertz to 15 kilohertz. Okay. Yeah, that's clear. Okay, thanks. Um, now, you answered this question earlier, but maybe it's helpful to repeat it. How shallow can you get with these systems? Uh, how, 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 shallow, uh, how, how shallow? For these uh, 10,000 or? Uh, the, uh, for the systems, maybe, yeah, the 10,000. For all the systems? Yeah. Or for for 10,000, so for the 10,000, we know that we have very uh, good data from one meter to... Uh, 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 150 meters of water depth, mm -hmm. and we can penetrate in a few, uh, let's say, uh, 10, 20 meters to sometime in clay environments. Recently, we go deep in 40 meters of uh, sediments in uh, in five clay rich sediments. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the Echoes 10,000. Okay. Yeah. For example, for the 3500s, so we can work in a full ocean depth. So the, the big hell-mounted system, for example, we can work in full ocean depths. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hopefully that answered the question. Here's another one. Uh, you'll like this one. Can echoes replace a single beam echo sounder? Echoes re replace a single beam echo sounder? Yeah. Yes. Yes, they can replace. Yes, we have uh, natural uh, chirp uh, systems, so we do not I interfere with them. We can work also with multi beam echo sonder. So yes, but it, can, but it can be used to. Will it measure the depth of the water? Can it be uh, used yes. as an echo sure. sounder? Oh yes, 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 yes. So for with depth, you we can also obtain the the water depths uh, just uh, mm. rapidly. Yes, yes, it, it replaces it. Yes. It's not, what it's, it's not what it's designed to do, but it's, uh, it has some capacity in that area. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in the, ten, in the Echoes 10,000 example data, what's the maximum signal penetration and vertical resolution? So the maximum penetration, like I said, it's like uh, we perform... This, is, this, is in the, this is, I think, is in the, in the image that we, shoot, that we showed, uh, Guillaume. Uh, you know, for the, the, the last the, the, profile, for example? The picture that we showed with the pebbles in it, for example. Oh, it was a penetration of uh, about 10 meters. Okay. 10 meters of penetration. Yeah. Or if I remember well, in Scotland, it was about 10 meters of penetration. Okay, yeah. And what, and what, and the, what, and what was the water depth there? It was 25 meters of water depth. Um. And so the, the, the subsequent, well, the, the associated question about that was what was the vertical resolution? Oh, yes, sorry, I forgot that. So the vertical resolution is eight centimeters, but 7.5 actually, that's the theoretical resolution. Okay. And we know because we have different examples with a uh, covering system that we can observe this resolution actually when we compare with sediment cores. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, so now we've got another one here. Um, where is my question? How fast is the bottom tracking option? Problem in the past with this being very time consuming and also auto reflector picking not really reliable in standalone mode. Okay, so it's automatic with depth. So through the survey, you can have an information about the bottom and the depth of the bottom automatically. So it's in real time with the Dell Seismic software. Mm. Okay. And, and obviously, you can fine tune uh, this information uh, in post processing rapidly after the survey with Delph also. But you have your information in real time. Okay. Um, we maybe need to dig a little bit deeper into the answer for that question. Um, there, may, there may be. Um, there may be a further there may be a further discussion needed, perhaps. Um, okay. So on another topic, um, when are fewer or more transducers needed? And you touched on this a bit earlier, but maybe you can just explain again. Yeah. For example, uh, the, uh, in some environments, we have a, a few tens of meters of compacted sand to uh, see below. 
And if you have um, more transducer, you can have more power in the in the beam, so you can more penetrate and see below uh, some um, uh, very hard uh, sediment. You know, so the more you have transducers, the more you, you more you can penetrate in the sediment. Okay. Um, there's another quick one about the Echoes 10,000. What penetration subsurface depth does the Echoes 10,000 offer? And is penetration depth dependent on the water column? It, so the maximum penetration we get with the 10,000 is about 40 uh, meters and sometimes 45 with the 10,000. And we were at about 50 meters of water depth. We know for sure that we can get such... Um, good data and uh, the resolution never change uh, until 150 meters of water depth. But if we never, we tried like close to uh, 200, it was also good, but we don't know, maybe we can go uh, in um, uh, with uh, more water depths. Uh, we don't know that, but apparently good data until 150, 200. Okay, that's helpful. Um, we've got one here, which is about the acquisition software, um, and it's. It, I think we're going to take this as a as a uh, as a, a suggestion for improvement of our product. Why um, okay. why why does the acquisition software not show heave corrected data in real time? Um, basically, saying okay. this could be a ba this, a this would be a useful QC a useful QC requirement. Um, okay. Especially where no post processing is available on board. Yeah, that's a that's a good comment. That's a good, yes. So I would have to ask to Philippe Allen with a with a, could have an answer for that for sure. And uh, maybe we can just take the uh, the information and the name of the contact, and we will contact uh, the person later. For yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I think it's uh, if it's not on our roadmap, then we'll we'll uh, find out where it needs to be on that roadmap. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sure. Yeah, okay. we'll discuss this point. Um, so there's a point here about pricing. Um, these systems are significantly more expensive than other systems. Can you say again what the main difference and advantages of this system versus others? So I'm not sure the, if that's true, if they're, they're significantly more expensive. No, I don't have no, that. no, it's not significantly more expensive. It's it's very close to other systems, but we offer a lot of more advantages. And one of of these advantages, like we can also uh, observe and characterize the sediment. So each time, each environment, we have a solution for your environment. So AUV, portable solution, hull mounted, and we can work it from one meter to full ocean depth. And what is very efficient with our technology is that we always obtain an information about the sediment, the sediment layer, the buried objects. So we have full advantage for a price that is very quite the same that others. Yeah, sure. I think the, the flexibility or at least the, the range of different uh, capabilities of a system uh, like the 10,000, for example, over and above, um, let's say, a parametric system that people might be you know, more used to using these days is is quite distinct, I think, in terms of the object detection, but not only, but also the uh, the penetration and the data, the data quality. Yeah. Um, so this coming coming back to this question, what is the maximum water depth the Echoes Ten Thousand has been tested in, and what is the signal penetration and vertical resolution at that depth? So we're looking for the maximum water depth and the maximum penetration and an understanding of the resolution in that, in that uh, test. Okay, that's a very specific question. So if, uh, if I can remember well, so we worked at 150 meters of water depth and we penetrated like 15 meters deep in the sediment. Mm -hmm. And the resolution is always the same. So it's about eight centimeters of resolution for the system. Okay, that's great. That's very clear. Um, moving, um, yeah, moving on. Um, how can we relate multi-beam or single beam with this discussion? I'm not sure what the uh, what the. So they don't need to be synchronized. We, for example, let's say we take the the ten thousand, for example. So we emit it in our bandwidth. 
So it's a very lower frequency than GB Mecosonor. For example, that ranges from, let's say, 150 to six, uh, uh, 50 kilohertz to 600 uh, kilohertz. So it's not the same bandwidth. So everybody is listening his own signal and we can work uh, together and we can obtain um, and merge all of this uh, data uh, with the Delft uh, seismic software and Delft uh, sonar also. That, uh, so yeah. this is, we, we worked uh, very recently with two systems, so that's not okay. a problem. Okay, I'm not, um, yeah, hopefully that answered the question. I'm not entirely sure if that was the, 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 the point of the question, but please, if that wasn't the answer you're after, then... I'm, I'm sorry. Let us know. Let us know and we'll have another <laughs> go. Um, so there's another question here. Some other sub-bottom profilers are using parametric technology. How do Echoes series compare? So we've done a little bit of that, um, but maybe you can just give another quick overview. Um, Ten seconds on that topic. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is a, we use natural chirp system. So uh, again, it, it doesn't interfere with... Uh, um, single beam or multi-beam echo sonder. So we have a wider and a better aperture that can detect the geology. So for example, the generate parabolas and uh, with parametric, it's very uh, difficult to obtain. That would mean that the boat should go very slowly. There is no waves because they have very narrow beam uh, technology. So with this um, uh, technology, we can observed a lot of features and a signal continuity uh, without all the motion possible uh, on the field. And also we have better imaging quality, so it's easier, faster data interpretation, very more rapid. We need a lower power equipment and a smaller topside amplifiers. Okay, that was it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ten second story. Thanks, Guillaume. Right, now we're going to move to the Echoes 3500. Um, we're going... Yeah. Um, we're going full ocean depth. Um, so this is a question about what's the optimal pre penetration in sandy environment, say in the tropical conditions um, with the effects of thermoclines. So full ocean depth. And <coughs> echo yeah. Okay. So it depends on the transducer. So if we, let's say, so we want the three of the seven transducers. So if we take the... Uh, the three uh, transducers, we can uh, see below several tens of meters of sand, let's say uh, 20 uh, meters of uh, sand, for example, using the T3. And uh, I'm not sure that the thermocline will affect uh, a lot the, the signal. Uh, I, I'm not sure we have any effect of that. So if, so if the, the, the person that asked this question uh, had some trouble to to see anything in the sediment because there is a strong thermocline uh, in the water column. They, uh, we can discuss about this point, but uh, I think there is no problem with that. Is our system? And and what about the seven transducer system? Have you got uh, uh, some ideas of that one, Guillaume? Yes, with the seven transducer. So as I said, we can work in full ocean depths, and we have a lot of. Uh, uh, Good data with the the for example, that uh, is equipped with uh, the high mounted version of the Echoes uh, 3500 with seven transducers, and we have so many publication using these systems, uh, technology of these systems, and uh, so we know that we can penetrate of several tens to hundreds of meters uh, in every kind of uh, environment with these systems. Okay, so you're talking about several hundred meters with a with a seven transducer system. Yes, deep in the sediment, but uh, we we can work in several uh, thousand of meters of water depths. I understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about full ocean depth with that that question. Yeah, full ocean depths. Yeah. Um, hopefully that answers the question. It's one of these things like how long is a piece of string, isn't it? I mean, it's very oh. difficult to put a to put a, 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 a firm answer on it. But the answer with seven transducers. Full ocean depth, sandy uh, environment, um, 200 meters. What are we talking? Several hundred meters when you. Uh, for, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a, it cut it rapidly at the end of your question. Okay, so so uh, with a seven transducer um, array, 
uh, full yeah. o- f- the full ocean depth. How many hundreds of meters penetration can we uh, have we observed? We observed uh, uh, we observed about two hundred meters of uh, penetration. Okay. Okay. Yeah, several times at one hundred and fifty meters of uh, penetration. Let's move on a little bit from that because it's a sort of never-ending yeah. story about you know what if, what if, what if, and it's very hard to know. Uh, you can't put a precise uh, <coughs> answer on any of it, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> but here's one you you can put a pre- precise answer on. Um, does the system record the transmit signal spectrum for signal deconvolution? Yeah, so what, what is the question exactly? Uh, does, the sy- does, does the system record the transmit signal spectrum for signal yeah. deconvolution? Yes. Yes. Yes, they Please. record everything. <laughs> they record everything in XTF but we can export in SegY also. So all the transmitted and received signal and the correlation, so the chirp uh, processes, everything is recorded. So we can see also the correlation, the GRAC, uh, everything in the, in the, the process is recorded with Dell Seismic. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Um, there's plenty more questions, Guillaume. Um, okay. <laughs> Is Echoes compatible with recording systems other than Delph? Yes, this is compatible, yes, with um, all other software, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, I think basically it's Xblue's approach is to be as open as possible and to be uh, compatible with industry standards, yes, but- formats and so on, and, and, and third-party software or systems as much as yes, we, yes. as much as we can. So uh, anyone that yes, wants but to... if you for for example, just if I can add just something, if you if you if you buy the system, for example, any echoes you buy, so the Delph Seismic uh, software uh, comes with it. So it's linked. Is that so you don't act, have is that to, the ac- you don't the have to buy software. a software. It's it's in the package. Okay. Is that the acquisition software or also the processing software? Yes. Everything. The both. acquisition and the processing. Okay. Yes. And the interpretation. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, right. More questions. More questions. Um, where have we got to? Um, we've, we've covered this, but maybe we'll say it again. What is the minimum depth into which Echoes 10,000 can be used? Um, and do you have some sample data? Uh, yes, so we, we have data uh, until one meter of water depth, but we, we never tried uh, to go uh, in a shallower environments because we didn't want to block the system. But uh, I, we know that we worked with, uh, with some window that can protect it, so we could use, but we know that, uh, yes, minimum one meter, for sure, we have good data. Um, so whoever asked the question, please drop us a line afterwards and we'll, um, um, we can show you the data um, and carry on the conversation. But yeah, into one meter, we've, we've gone into one meter of water and we could, we could go further um, in theory. Um, yeah. <laughs> so here's another one about Echoes 10,000. Um, how does Echoes 10,000 work in, the sand, in a sand predominant area? For example, the clay sand, silty sand area. In yeah. The, in the in the in the ten thousand echoes example data that we showed, what's the maximum signal penetration in such an area? Environment. Yeah. So it it depends on the sand type. Yes. So so from few meters uh, in uh, to twenty meters in core sediment. So the more is compacted. Sand, the more it's difficult to penetrate. But sometimes if it's core sediments and we have a good penetration uh, because, it's, uh, because of the porosity, we can reach at about uh, 20 meters of uh, penetration. Mm. And sometimes it's very, very compact and it's uh, more difficult to go deeper than a few meters, let's say maximum 10 meters. That's good. It's a, it's a it's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? Because it's so subjective. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it so depends. It depends on the on the, on the sand. It was yeah. demonstrated in the literature. So 
depends on the type. Sure. Um, so we've got another one here now, which is another, again uh, on, on uh, maybe Echoes 10,000 um, specific. Um, have you used these systems? Have they been tested in continental waters, such as rivers and lakes? And do, you, and do, we, do we have to pay attention for something specific in, in continental waters? It's, uh, the, I think, rivers and lakes. Oh, yeah. So we did several uh, collaborations with a university in France, in Belgium, in Germany, uh, using the Echo 10,000 uh, in lakes, so in different types of lakes. So we had uh, crater lakes, uh, mar lakes, um, so we have alpine uh, lakes. And uh, this is very interesting because uh, depending on the sedimentation, that is changing a lot in this kind of environment. So we can have very fine sedimentation, clay, silty uh, sedimentation. And we can have also like mass transport deposit, like during earthquakes or after earthquakes or um, uh, extreme uh, runoff precipitation. So we have a lot of uh, uh, different um, uh, acoustic impedance of the layers. So we have a lot of good data and information for characterizing, characterizing this kind of environments. So recently, we had very good data that we presented uh, during several conferences, international conferences, and that can be found on our red uh, website and uh, all this reference. So I can provide you with uh, a lot of data if you want. That's great. And uh, is there anything specific to consider when operating in, let's say, fresh water? Guillaume, is there any, any particular considerations for inland water, inland water surveys? No, because it's not, uh, as we said, it's a small system. It's uh, easy to use. So generally on lakes, uh, um, people have small vessel. So we put a pole uh, on a sign and usually we don't have a lot of bad weather or big waves. So uh, it's, a, it's a good uh, good environment to use the, the Ecos in Southern. It's nothing very specific that should be think about. Uh, no, okay. No. Just, 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 uh, just take it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so one more one about another one about Echoes 10,000. Um, okay, this is another another good uh, maybe future development. Um, can I use the Echoes 10,000 to be in a towed option uh, to reduce the larger water column? So can, oh, we, yeah. can we deploy the Echoes 10,000 in a tow body? Yes, that's a good idea. Actually, we did that uh, one year ago. So you can use a small cataract, for example, and it's um, a little bit uh, so, so you can track it here. And uh, that's a good option also, and it works very well. So yes, we can use that. You have to think to an interface, to an interface that we can also design on your own uh, small toe or uh, cataract, I don't know the things you are using but uh, yes i think i think i think the po the point of the question is to to is, is to tow it underwater uh to reduce the the water column ah to reduce the water column okay, so yes it's going to be towed so, underwater yeah yeah so for the 10000 uh we can uh, put the system until seven meters uh, below the surface, but for the five uh, and, uh, for the five thousand, sorry, uh, so we can tow until very close to the surface. And this is an AUV uh, kit also, so you can work until uh, thousands of meters uh, of water depth. So yes, it's uh, it's possible with the five thousand. That is. It's a good uh, penetration resolution. Uh, yeah. So for the 10,000, yeah. for this unit here, it's only rated to yeah. seven meters below the water. So not really, yeah. uh, not, it's not going to give you a huge advantage uh, to deploy it on a towed system. But the Echoes 5000 yeah. is designed would be the, the good solution operation. for you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so here's one. We have an Echoes 3500 T7. Is there an option okay. for us? Is there an option to use different transducers numbers, say one or three instead of seven, always for operation in shallow water? Uh, would there be an advantage to this? So they've got 
the seven transducer array. Yeah, it's can they yeah. just use one transducer or three transducers within the array? Uh, and when would you know when when might that bring some interesting advantages? Yeah, so uh, there are several solutions. So maybe they keep the seven transducer and they do not remove any transducers, and, and we can just uh, electronically. Um, just use one or three or five transducers. So to generate the beam, we cannot do anything we want. So we cannot use, for example, two or four because we need to generate the beam. So that's the first point. And uh, also what could be uh, the advantage? Uh, it's to uh, use less uh, power. If you, if you go in shallow water environment, you don't need a lot of uh, power because you you go in shallow water environment, so you should not be um, insulicate too much the water column. And uh, yes, but I mean you have yeah. But so the echo system is uh, the seven transducer system can be operated with one transducer alone, or three, or five, or the full seven. Yes, I should. I should ask some details uh, to uh, some of my colleagues to be sure that we can uh, do that without any problem. Uh, but uh, yes, I think we can design that uh, electronically. We can do something with Delft. Yeah, I, I should ask to be sure. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we need to dig a little bit more to get the yes, yes, yes. answer on that one. Yeah, to uh, confirm the answer. Yes, let's, uh, it's important. Let's, let's follow up uh, after this event. Please drop us a line. Yeah. Um, or maybe we have the details of, of, the, of the questioner. Um, what about, okay, here's one. This is, um, what about coarse sediment penetration? Big question. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so by coarse sediment, I mean that it should correspond to coarse sand or gravel on rocks. So sometimes, okay, so the more it's fine, like uh, clay or silt, the more it's, uh, it's good for good penetration. So in coarse environments, it's more difficult to penetrate. But if we have peak power, like the 3500 T3, we can penetrate of several tens of uh, meters uh, without any problem. We have a lot of examples uh, of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we yes, even Protected pipelines in rocky environments. So yes, we can be very efficient in uh, very hard and coarse uh, sediment. Mm. Okay, so that I think is a, again, it's another one maybe for a, a, a conversation to carry on. So we can we can maybe show some data examples. Guillaume can uh, can show you some uh, some real survey data and uh, maybe yeah. add a bit more to the answer than we're able to with uh, in this in this context. Um, another question here about Delf acquisition. Um, is Delph acquisition and Delph interpretation integrated in a single software in the future? Um, so the, today they're two separate models: <laughs> the acquisition and the uh, the post processing. Is there a, is there a plan That's to combine the two? <clears throat> That's a good question slash comment. So I uh, I have to to note this uh, comment and to discuss with my colleague, but. Yeah, why not? I don't know. I don't have the answer. Okay. I have to discuss with yeah. people. So we, we, we can come back to you with the answer on that, having consulted with... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the Just Delph, uh, don't hesitate the to send us an email and uh, yeah. we discuss about that. Um, so here we go. This is one about the AUV ROV option. So the Echoes 5000. What is the weight and dimensions of the total system for the Echoes 5000? Have you got any... Uh, any of those numbers in your head, Guillaume? Oh, uh, unfortunately, I don't want to. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I should answer probably this question, but uh, if you let me a few <laughs> seconds, I could check on my. Have, have you got it right there? If you have, otherwise, uh, we can we can come back with the answer later. Uh, yeah, I can come back with the answer. I, I'm sorry to not have the answer, but you can send us uh, an email also with that. So let my contact to the person that asked yeah. this question and I will just answer rapidly. Yeah. Okay. That's, we'll leave it like that for that one. So we've got another one about shallow water. Everybody wants to go very shallow here. Uh, in very shallow water, one to two meters, um, yeah. 
Does the acquisition software for Echoes 10,000 uh, do the basic filtering of multiples, or is it necessary to wait in the post-processing stage to do that filtering? <clears throat> for the for the multiples, so yeah, yeah. For the multiples, we have to to wait for uh, for the post-processing. Okay. Yeah. So that's not that's not dealt with in the real time uh, environment. No, in real time, the no, no, we have to clean that in post-processing. But you do see and characterize the sediment you want to see in real time. But it, actually, the the, the multiple uh, with depths, you, you will see that on your profile. Sure. Yeah. But that's obviously quickly removed in the, the, the post-processing uh, stage. Yeah, yeah, you can post-process that, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a couple more here. Um, for the toad option, what would be the cable length limitation? The cable lens uh, limitation. That's also a good question. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't use this system uh, a, a lot, not recently. Um, so I don't know. I will. I will not this question also. Okay, we'll uh, hold that one uh, and come back to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, here's an easier one. Can we try the Echoes Ten Thousand before buying? Yes. 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 We. <laughs> Yes, 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 we can with demo and trials. Yeah, no problem with that. We'd be happy to to do a demos for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's here's one about um, comparing an existing system. I think. So, so, what system do you think would be comparable to the conventional hull mounted pinger four by four? Uh, uh, for, uh, what what is it the the um, uh, the frequency? I don't know. It, it, Information of this pinger? I don't know. It's a it's a conventional hull mounted pinger four by four. Is the question? Yeah. So we for the pinger. So we have a different systems. So, but if I put this answer uh, easy, that would be the 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 thirty five thirty five hundred would be the the best. Yeah. So the, yeah, so, so the can have is can the... work in um can have with um. Uh, um several hundreds to thousands of uh, meters of water depth and you can penetrate of uh, tens of meters uh, deep in sediment. Yeah, so 3,500 T3. Uh, yeah, okay. So the 3,500 T3 sounds like the most, is where you'd start looking and you might... Yeah, or, or, or T1. It, it depends on the sediment. Yeah, T1 could be also a good option. Yeah, um, good. Um, what is the possibility of uh, the ringing effect in the... in 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 water depth, less than five meters for the Echoes 10,000. Yeah, so um, uh, this is a good question, but uh, we do have data of parabolas and the ringing effect in uh, about five to 10 meters in Scotland, actually, because these uh, pebbles and cobbles, we saw that in... Um, we saw that very shallow uh, environments. Mm -hmm. So yes, apparently between five and 10 meters, we have uh, these parabolas generated also. So I should check in details to see uh, at what time we do not see these parabolas uh, to verify on the seismic profile. That's also a good question. So you have to go through the profile and check the water depths and see at what depths this uh, stops. That's a good question. I have to check that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so we've got one here now about um, training. Yeah, so can Xblue provide training and services um, for first-time users? Yes, we provide trainings. So on-site setting to work and assistant on first jobs. Yes, yes, we do that. Okay, yeah. So uh, I think, I think well, maybe just maybe to extend the point, the, um, we've, we've got... Yeah, we, yes, we... We've got systems available for, for trials or, you know, for short loans. Yes, um, we do have. We can support. Guillaume will be more than happy to, uh, to come and help and, uh, and, and provide training and, and, and assistance in, uh, let's say, an initial operation of, of the system. Um, yes, and, and if, if um, all the, the person, yes, like geophysicists or anybody, engineers or anybody wants to come and see our laboratory, see how we work, and we can try that uh, on our environment, in, uh, in these coastal environments. We can go 
on your own site and see uh, if it's 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 a good system for what you are trying to obtain. So yes, just uh, discuss about uh, what you need and we will find a solution. That's great. Thanks, Guillaume. I think that's the end of our uh, questions uh, and answers. Um, so okay, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much for your questions, and thank you yeah, very thank much, you very for much to everybody Guillaume. for attending this X Live. Yeah, thanks for joining us, uh, Guillaume, and we'll catch up soon. Cheers. Thank you, David. Bye bye. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody, um, for your questions. That was excellent. Um, hope you found the the the, the, the webinar useful. Um, as I said before, we we needed to keep it at quite a high level because we weren't looking to get with the time available, we weren't looking to get too deep in any particular aspect of the Echo series, the Delft software and, and the general topic. Um, but please, please, please contact us immediately if you've got more questions or you want to follow up on any other aspects of what we've, what we've talked about here today. Um, that's it for this show, but we will be um, continuing, we'll be showing, we'll be doing another one of these uh, events later today, but uh, Later this month, we'll be doing uh, another X Live about our CPIX um, multi-beam sonar, particularly looking at uh, fisheries um, applications with that with that uh, webinar. So if that if that's interesting to you or any of your colleagues, please uh, please join us then. Um, in the meantime, thank you for being with us, and we'll hope to see you again soon. Bye.